Will Randall joins me now. He's the CEO of Arena Minerals, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol AN. Will, welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me. Will, uh, this, co this company, this project, Arena Minerals, is in the lithium space, but it has quite a different approach to what most lithium companies take. Right. And why don't you start with an overview of what that difference in approach is? Yeah, I mean, I guess we can sort of lead into that with a little bit of the history. Um, Argentina over the last, say, 10 years has been really good at, at establishing a world-class resource. Uh, the numbers have increased dramatically sort of in the first uh, lithium boom and now in the second one. Um, but it hasn't been all that great at transferring those resources into actual production facilities, producing mines, lithium carbonate, et cetera. And I believe a large part of that is because these brines are a little bit complicated to process correctly. And that's showing up in the feasibilities around in the space. Um, so when we sold Lithium X, um, the previous company, to, to a Chinese group, um, I said, okay, well, where, where, is, where are we going to be able to add value in Argentina over the, the next uh, sort of five to ten years as we transform all these resources into uh, active mines? Um, so I assembled a team and we came up with a process that is based on a conventional evaporation process but that does two main things. One, well, number one, it works, and it works well, um, but it lowers our OPEX um, quite dramatically, somewhere around 30 to 70 percent, and at the same time produces a very high quality brine concentrate that can fleet a carbonate plant producing battery grade materials consistently, which in turn sells for a much higher selling price. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we based Arena on, and we, we got the technology, and we acquired a project that um, allows us to create this reagent that in turn allows us to reduce the OPEX. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were part of the team that sold the Lithium X project onto the Chinese. Correct. So you've been there, you've been here and you've done this before. Yeah, I started in the lithium business 2008-2009, uh, wow. so early on. Um, and at that time we acquired the project and developed it that eventually got vended into Lithium X. Mm -hmm. and was the flagship project that was sold to a Chinese group for, uh, I think it was $265 million we sold it for. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, and then you mentioned that a lot of the projects that get to a feasibility stage don't go beyond it because the execution turns out to be different from what was arrived at in feasibility in some cases. The reality is, I think, that the lithium brines have such unique characteristics characteristics from brine to brine that they all require a certain uh, an excess of attention to chemical engineering. Correct, yeah, so every brine is, is somewhat different mm -hmm. and unlike in, in other mining sectors where there are a whole bunch of examples, there are only four right now active producing brine projects. In the world? In the world. Really? Four. Two are in Atacama, which are, dominate the world scene as it were and um, use one type of process. And then there are two in Argentina right now, Orocobre and FMC. FMC has its proprietary process, which is not based on conventional evaporation ponds. And Orocobre was using um, a liming process, which is similar to Takama, but different um, in what reagents they use and what um, compounds they decide to attack early on to allow the brine to concentrate. So yes, and then all the brines in Argentina have, will have varying degrees of magnesium, sulfate, calcium, um, boron in it, and of course, various um, lithium grades as well. So that adds one layer of complexity. The lack, the lack of um, expertise out there, because there are only three other or four other producing uh, mines, so there are not that many people that have done this before, mm -hmm. which is another one of the, the good selling points of Arena. We have um, on our board, and as one of our major shareholders, Eduardo Morales, who um, started working in the lithium industry, I think, 40 years ago, 35 years ago, and was in charge of designing, building, and then operating um, the Atacama project, mm. which is the world's largest producer. He um, ran uh, Rockwood uh, up until, I think it was 2014 that it got sold to ALB um, for somewhere around six billion. So, right. it was, uh, so it was a huge transaction. And at that point, 
Uh, shortly after his lockup period, he decided to join Lithiumax and now Arena with, with us. So we're very fortunate to have him leading the processing and, and the technological side of this company. Yeah, okay. So um, tell us about the project itself, how you came to acquire it, and how closely it's going to emulate the development of a project like the one that was sold to ALB. Is that the ultimate goal? Yeah, that is the ultimate goal. Why We're looking at Argentina coming in at much higher costs and, and these feasibilities at higher costs than Atacama. And with Eduardo, we sat down and said, that shouldn't be. I mean, these brines, yes, they're a little dirtier. Yes, they're a little lower grade. But there's no reason for it to suffer such a punishment in the processing. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we said, okay, we used an Atacama-based approach. Um, and they do this. They do, instead of buying lime as a reagent and, and treating it that way, they develop their own reagent from high calcium brines and then treat it and advance it to around 6% lithium, 5 to 6% lithium, where it concentrates into a very pure uh, feed for their carbonate plant. So that was basic premise. We said, we can do this in Argentina. First thing we did is we found the asset in Argentina that has a huge excess of calcium. Uh, what we think is the best one, but also decent lithium grades. And that's the Antofagia project. Okay. Um, yeah. So the Antofagia project is uh, in Catamarca province. And looking at the map here, it's, uh, it's pretty much the furthest south of all of the lithium projects in the lithium triangle. Um, there are a couple further south that unfortunately we didn't put on that on that map. Um, so there's uh, neolithium is further south, but yes, we are we are a little bit further south than most. We share that asset with ALB. Mm -hmm. um, they control. Albemarle is part owner of one of these assets of the Antofagia uh, Solar. Oh, so, so does that make them the logical uh, takeout candidate, or the you the logical takeout candidate for for ALB just to keep their. Uh, you know, the, the supply down? Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes forward. But I mean, yeah, obviously we're open to, to everything. And they're, they are in the same neighborhood and they clearly like, they actually in the last conference call, they did mention the asset as, as potentially being the largest uh, resource in mm -hmm. Argentina. So it's clearly a focus for them. And um, we're going to be very active there, you know, not only developing the brine for this reagent, a lithium rich, calcium rich reagent, um, to partnership up with other companies that you can see on that map as well, but also developing the project as a standalone project. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so um, now the let's let's look at the uh, the brine concentrations in evaporation pond slide that we've got here. Yeah, so and and tell me how this uh, this sort of supports your 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 approach. Yeah, this here basically shows what we've been able to do. And this is not theoretical. This is actually proven on the ground. So we've, we've done this in, in smaller evaporation ponds, obviously. We don't have a full facility. We call it a pilot plant. Um, and the blue line that you can see there is lithium concentrating over time. So as it goes up, we get higher and higher concentrations of lithium in brine as it travels through the pond system. And the orange line is all the other stuff that you don't want. Um, as you can see, it, there's a big dip uh, originally there in the, in the deleterious elements, as we call them, and that's when we treat it. And then we tr have a couple of more treatments along the way. But the important thing is, as we get to 6% lithium, you can see that all the unwanted um, um, elements, magnesium, sulfate, et cetera, start dropping out okay. at, a, at a very serious rate and you end up with 6% lithium and 2% other salts. So that's less, um, less elements that are eventually going to report to your lithium carbonate in the plant and therefore producing a much higher quality lithium carbonate consistently over time. Mm -hmm. Not just in plant startup where the plant is clean, but all the way through the year. And uh, the other line that we have there, that 1% lithium line, it shows the amount of unwanted salts there. And that's typically how most feasibilities in Argentina are being run right now. They're concentrating to about 0.6 to 1.2%. I put it at 1% just to sort of give it a rough uh, average there. So it means that in these feasibilities and in, in some of the producing assets right now, we're sending a dirty brine to the plant, which as the plants start out is okay, you can handle it, but as these materials stay in the system, it starts producing lower grade carbonate, which in turn then starts becoming industrial carbonate and sells for a substantially lower price. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, so then what is the timeline for all of this 
uh, development? Like, is this going to take 10 years? Is it going to take five years? Is it going to take two <coughs> years? Well, so our, our company is just starting out. Um, and I think we're well positioned because a lot of these, as I said, a lot of these resources are now getting to feasibility and looking at about different options, um, looking at how they're going to finance it, et cetera. So we are in a good position to, as I said, develop our asset, but at the same time combine with a more advanced project to offer our expertise and this calcium-rich brine feed <coughs> to develop our process in conjunction with them. So I would say that those are the next steps um, for ARENA over the short uh, time frame, say over the next six months, a strategic partnership with a, with a larger company, um, in Argent obviously with, with assets in Argentina, and you'll also see us start work on our, our project in, in, in the sense that we'll get um, environmental permits for geophysics, sampling, drilling, and actually building a larger scale pilot plant. Well, how does <coughs> this approach uh, affect the economics of the company and differentiate it from the normal approach to other Solars? Yeah, so for a project that would be potentially partnering up with us, a sort of typical brine, Argentine brine, um, the numbers are actually very significant. We've, if we implement our process, um, you'll have somewhere around $1,500 of savings on the OPEX side, which on a 20,000 ton operation is $30 million worth of savings in operational costs a year. And if you couple that with the assurance of a battery grade uh, carbonate at the end, you're also getting a nice big bump in sale price, which overall can mean up to somewhere around 100 million of savings um, or delta a year which is very, very significant mm -hmm. over, over, over life of mine. Okay, um, so that I guess with lower, lower uh, capex required for the plant, you actually end up with a lower cost per unit of input uh, of output. Yeah, that's, uh, that's correct as well, because what's happening a lot is, and you'll see it in the feasibility studies, there is another section added onto the end. So as the carbonate starts coming down in grade, we're putting it through a, a purification circuit. And that purification circuit in our process would not have to be built. We come out just of the carbonate plant with battery grade material. So you save that, um, that money. And then as it says there, product flexibility, the brine, the concentrated brine is a saleable product in itself. And it's, it's actively traded in the market. It was developed in Chile by SQM and Rockwood and sold across to China, much like uh, the spodumin guys do now, right now. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's a great intro to the company. We'll leave it there for now and come back to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. All right, thank you very much.